Hey everyone, welcome back to the course on the 40S Pre-Cal exam. Now we're moving on to rational functions and in this video we're going to look at the characteristics needed for either sketching rational functions or figuring something out from a graph of a rational function. First of all, what is a rational function? We've looked at polynomials. This is just a polynomial over another polynomial. So I've, I've put an example up here that we're going to work with. Um, but that's essentially all it is. So the only difference is now that we're dealing with the denominator, there's some other characteristics that come into play, such as asymptotes and holes. Um, these are really the four main characteristics that we need to graph or solve any information about a rational function. The zeros are the x-intercepts, the vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, and the holes in the graph. Just like polynomials, we always want to deal with these things in factored form. So the first thing I'm going to do is factor everything in sight, top and bottom. These are quadratics, which makes it really nice uh, because we're really good at factoring quadratics. So this is x plus 5, x minus 2 over x minus 2, x plus 4. Uh, x minus 4, sorry. All right, two numbers that multiply to positive 8, negative 2 and negative 4, and add to negative 6. Now that we have it in factored form, both top and bottom, we can easily solve for all of these things. First thing is the zeros. Think about what a zero is. It's an x-intercept. That means it's an x value that makes the entire function zero, right? the y value zero. So if I set this equal to zero, I can basically ignore the denominator. Because you can think about it as I could just multiply both sides by x minus 2, x minus 4. It would multiply up to the right side, and that would be zero. So really all we focus on for the x-intercepts is what makes the top 0. So in this case, it's x equals negative 5. If we don't see that that's the case, take one of the factors, so x plus 5, set it equal to 0, and solve. A minus 5 both sides, and we get x equals negative 5. So that's one of our zeros. Now the other question is, is x equals 2 a 0? Well, it seems like it should be because it makes the numerator 0. But there's also an x minus 2 factor on the bottom. So that's actually going to become our x value of a hole in the graph. What that means is the graph is discontinuous at x equals 2. Yes, we can essentially cancel these out. But we have to remember that x equals 2 is not in the domain of this function because that would make the denominator 0. So it seems like they should just cancel out and never be seen again, but we have to, before we do that, remember that there will be a hole at x equals 2. So x-intercepts, values that make unique factors on the top 0, holes, fact values that make common factors on the top and the bottom, equal to 0. Now what if we wanted the y-coordinate of our hole? We know, we know for the 0, it's negative 5, 0. That's the definition of an x-intercept, right, is the y-coordinate is 0. What about the hole, though? We know at x equals 2, what's the y-coordinate? Well, here's where we cancel these, and we can ignore them, and then just plug 2 back in. So 2 plus 5 over 2 minus 4. That will be our f of 2, or that would be f of 2, so that will be the y-coordinate um, at our hole, and that's 7 over negative 2. So the coordinates of our hole are when x is 2, and y is negative 7 over 2. That can be a tricky piece to graphing these. Sometimes people forget how to find the y-coordinate of the holes. And the way to do it is ignore the brackets that go to 0 and plug the x value back in. Now for our asymptotes. What is an asymptote? Uh, on the vertical side, it's found where, remember asymptotes in general are where the function sort of rides along those asymptotes as either x is getting really big or y is getting really big. So on a vertical asymptote, it's where x, it's where y is getting really, really big or really, really, really negative. And the question is, what x value does that happen at? Well, it's all about what x makes the denominator, so the bottom denominator equal 0. So again, we're now ignoring these x minus 2 because those are common on top and bottom. The other factor on the bottom is x minus 4. So if x minus 4 equals 0, that must mean x has to equal 4. And that is the equation of my vertical asymptote, meaning we cannot have a value of 
x equaling 4. So we're going to put a dotted line through that, and it'll be vertical through where x equals 4. We'll see that in the next video. Horizontal asymptotes, same concept, except for it's what happens as the graph goes far in either direction for the x. So as x gets really big or really big negative, what is y trending towards? There is a quick little rule we can use here, and it has to do with the degree of the top and bottom. When I say degree, again, that's the highest exponent. If it's in factored form, you just count the, fact, the um, exponents of the factors. But clearly, the degree of the top here is 2, and the degree of the bottom here is 2 as well. So when the degrees are equal, so when degree top is equal to degree bottom, that is when we take the coefficients. So you can see there's a coefficient of 1 in front of the two large terms. So our horizontal asymptote is going to be at y equals 1 because it's 1 over 1. Okay, So this is at y equals 1. If there was a 4 here, it would be through y equals 4. If it was a 4 there and a 3 there, it would be through y equals 4 over 3. So whatever the coefficients on those largest terms are, if the degrees are the same, your horizontal asymptote is through the ratio of those coefficients. The other one we have to know is if the degree of the top is greater than the degree of the bottom. In this case, there is no horizontal asymptote when the top is greater than the bottom. And if we switch this, so I'll just say if the degree of the top is less than the degree of the bottom, then uh, y equals 0 or the x-axis becomes your horizontal asymptote. I'll maybe write that one up here because it does come up a lot. Degree top is less than bottom. That is where y equals 0 is your horizontal asymptote. So depending on the degrees of the polynomial on top versus the degree of the polynomial on the bottom, you can easily find out your horizontal asymptote. Vertical asymptotes are really easy too, and once we have those asymptotes there, plug in a few points, it's quite clear how these things graph, and we'll look at that in the next video. Thanks so much, and we'll see you in the next video.